throughout my, my, my career growing up, the importance of music was massive. You know, whether you're listening to it on the way to a, a game, you know, whether you're listening to it in a changing room, your music plays a huge importance in, in, in everyone's life, but in general in, in, in sports as well. He was very much into his football. I mean, proper, proper. And I hear that he was a pretty good player as well. Well, the year of the cockerel, they said. And the year of the cockerel, it's turned out to be. My background is, is Jamaican, my, my parents are Jamaican, so he was a staple in, in my house, you know, listening to, to reggae music and obviously, you know, none bigger than Bob Marley. So yeah, I've become very uh, accustomed to, to, to hearing, hearing his songs, hearing his voice throughout the household growing up, for sure. I knew about him in, in the 1980s. Uh, he used to come uh, a lot to London. London was the place where he, where he composed all his music, when he play all his music and so on. And there were rumors then started to be very, very strong rumors, more than rumors, that he was a total supporter. That's how he, he liked me. I imagine because of uh, he was very little like me, he, was, he didn't need a lot like me. So um, but unfortunately, I never, I never met him. I would have loved to, to meet him at the time. But uh, again, we were coming up to play the, the FA Cup final at the time, and, and he was in the very, very top of his music. So somehow it was not a, a time to to, to be together. I, I regret that very much. So in a lot of ways, he was a revolutionary. He talked all the time about the, uh, the normal man, the, the, the normal person. Um, and as well, I mean, he lived life to the full as well. I mean, he liked party. He, he, was, well, he was going into party nearly every day. This is why probably he couldn't be a footballer. Um, <laughs> the importance of music was massive. You know, whether you're listening to it on the way to a, a game, uh, in, in your headphones, you know, whether you listen to it in a changing room, your music plays a huge importance in, in, in everyone's life, but in general in, in, in sports as well. And it's funny because actually when I retired, I realised how music had kind of changed for me quite, quite a bit because I, I really used it to really tap into the emotions for, 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 for my football. For my football and, and Lucky you were a football player. <laughs> <laughs> Men and people will fight you down when you see childlike. I mean, I'd heard, I'd heard about it kind of during my playing days. You know, you, you always, as a player, you're always kind of interested in, in which celebrities uh, are Spurs fans. You know, I heard that Bob Marley was a Spurs fan, so that, that was fantastic to hear. And uh, I also heard that his favourite player was, was Ozzy. So, yeah, no, like Ozzy said, he, Bob, Bob knows his football then. Whenever we heard that a, a certain celebrity was, uh, was a Spurs fan, it was, you know, made you proud. It made you proud to, to, to wear the shirt. As you know, fans, I'm sure they would love to see more of Bob Marley's uh, kind of presence. You know, I believe I was only one years old when he actually passed away. So you know, it's such a shame that I, you know never had a chance to really uh, see him perform and to see how how spectacular he was. But obviously, his music is it lasts a lifetime. The thing was a thing of the past. He was very much into his football. I mean, proper, proper. And I hear that he was. A pretty good player as well. People close to Bob Marley say if he ever had to choose between music and soccer, the guitar would probably lose to the ball. I think football, like uh, like music, uh, is uh, is an art. It's a big, big art. And art, at the end of the day, is about freedom. I believe that Ledley, Bob, myself, we were all we were all in the same business. A little bit of show business, but a little bit of sport a sport business as well. When I decided to move to England. It was my choice. I, I wanted to, to, to come here. Uh, took a big, big chance. But I would say, from his point of view and from my own point of view as well, it was an incredible adventure. For him, it was all the time with his band and so on. I, I didn't have a band behind me, but I have Ricky Villa, that somehow helped me. But of course, Bob Marley, you cannot uh, fail to recognize him. He was, uh, his music was he just crossed frontiers and so on. So uh, it was all the time in the radio, all the time you were... Some of, some of his hits you were all the time listening, listening to. Talking about the film, the film was absolutely brilliant, I love it. Uh, you are there for one hour and a half plus of uh, wonderful, wonderful music, and on the other hand, you are, you are seeing all his, his history, his life. So it's a, it's a wonderful film. I believe that uh, probably he had to decide, he was a football fan first, and he had to decide, I would say, from one club in, in London, I would say. He knew about George Best, for example, and he, he admired him as well, he, he said in the press as well. But uh, George was already, he was not playing at the time. So that was the connection. And then, of course, one team in London, and we were the team at the time in, in London. Uh, we had Glenn Hall, we had Ricky Villa, and some of the other guys, I mean, 
the type of football we were playing was completely different of what it was the normal, say, uh, English football, very long balls and crosses and so on. So we played this different kind of football and, and people, not only uh, Bob, but everybody loved, loved it very, very much. Singer Bob Marley, his reggae music known far beyond its roots in Jamaica, died in a Miami hospital today after a long battle against cancer. It was about 10 days, 12 days before we played the 1981 Cup Final against Manchester City. Our famous Cup Final where he scored this beautiful goal and so on. So he passed away. It was very, very sad, yes. The cancer was, uh, he went to the doctor really less than one year before. And the doctor said, oh, this is cancer and this is very, very bad. And one year after, he, he was dead. It was a pity that somehow he was not able to see the, the final. He would have loved uh, uh, us winning the Cup and basically Ricky goal, he would have been very, very happy about that. All of a sudden... Spurs are in front again, and look what happened here. Some of his songs are very catchy, very easy to, to follow, say. Uh, so it will be very nice, I mean, probably we have also got to sing You want to sing a song here, yeah, for, for <laughs> the stadium? Yeah? We also got to Wembley here, maybe. Uh, yeah, we yeah. sing the song. Yeah. We do it. The fans, I'm sure the fans can make up a, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, a song. Yeah. Thank you for all he done um, to unite people, to unite the people in, in Jamaica as well. Uh, not only in Jamaica, but all over the world. Um, Thank you for his wonderful boy, for his wonderful contribution to music. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much. A sign of gra greatness is when people transcend frontier and he transcend ages as well. And he certainly has done that. So, it, it would be absolutely wonderful. I know he's not with us anymore, you know, to still be able to, to, to recognize that he was a fan of our football club is, is important.